So one one person mentioned to me that uh, that a lot of the AI that we've seen up till now has been basically versions of machine learning. Mm-hmm. and developing that in the ways you talked about it. But the generative AI, the, the possibilities of the future are just fundamentally different in terms of how. So can you talk a little bit about uh, like, what is it about, like what's really changing in in, in, the, in AI versus where we were, you know, maybe uh, 10 years ago where people said, we've been using AI all, you know, all along. Yeah. And, you know, really, if you think, you know, the, 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 the field of AI is now about 50 years old. If you go, you know, and study it, we've gone through multiple AI winters and, you know, just like my 46, you know, it was not the great AI chip, right? You know, so you've seen it. But now we're in a period of time where about, I think every two years, you're going to see a major algorithmic breakthrough in AI where there's going to be new classes of problems that now become solved. And obviously, you know, GPT-4, you know, uh, uh, generative AI, you know, particularly for text generation, right, you know, was a major breakthrough. Right. And, you know, I do expect that the next phase of AI is going to be much more around multimodal. AI, as it's called today, where, uh, you know, you're able to not just infer, right, in text, but you're going to be able to do that in uh, other domains as well, such as animation, you know, video generation, speech generation, all of those, you know, and literally, you know, we'll record every word that you ever said, every speech that you ever, ever said, and we'll have a generative AI version of you, right, that combines voice, video, and text, right, to be a better you. But right. Not for another five years. I got five more years in this career. So don't worry. No worry. <laughs> you know, but but I think this whole idea of multimodal AI and you know, more broadly, I I fully expect that there's going to be lots of discussions on what I what's referred to as AGI, you know, where we're going to be able to have AI systems in the next decade, you know, that truly will become indistinguishable from human behavior on broad sets of topics. You know, it's not just going to be that we can beat, you know, humans on uh, medical exams, but truly on a broad set of topics, you know, we'll be better than human behavior, you know, on many of those as a result of AI. So uh, just, I know the people are uh, virtually, uh, it's hard to hear, but um, so one thing that comes up a lot though, is this issue of, of cybersecurity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you just mentioned, and you know, we all know, you know, I've seen the Tom Hanks uh, story and these others, are, you know, our identities are going to be easy to mimic or voices already, I guess, can be mimicked pretty accurately. So how do we think about AI, and maybe I want to switch a little bit to quantum computing too, uh, and think about how new technologies, is it making it harder to preserve our privacy, preserve our information? Also, you know, let's talk about what in- Intel's role is in, in all of this. Yeah. Now, um, in, you know, was the printing press good or bad? Okay. It got used for all sorts of good things, right? And it got used for all sorts of bad things. So was it good or bad, right? And generally technology is neutral, right? You know, just say, right, you know, by themselves, they can be bent for bad or bent for good. And our job as both technologists, scientists, as well as policymakers is to be constantly bending them for good, right? And I would say any time that we can't show that it is a good outcome, you know, for humanity, the engineering ain't finished, right? You know, we have to be able to demonstrate, you know, if I let the autonomous vehicle go wild on the road and it's breaking laws, right? You know, putting people at human risk, the engineering's not done, right? And then that regard, right? You know, today there's technology available and, you know, that, uh, you know, I can uh, do deep fake detection with, you know, high 90s probability. I think regulation should require that that be part of the delivery of video. It's not that hard, right, to also say I can use it for incredible generation of animated characters and so on, but I believe there should be requirements. It has to be good. And if it's not proven as good for society, better than current systems, the engineering isn't yet complete, right? And that should be this contract between technology, society, policymakers, you know, regulators that we're constantly bringing these extraordinary breakthroughs. 
right? And saying, we're making them good, right? And in every domain, and they have to be regulated appropriately, you know, and brought forward. And generally, I've sort of viewed that, you know, a lot of technologists, a lot of us uh, Bay Area folk, right? It's sort of like those East Coast and Washington folk, you know, we're like cowboys. We ride in, we make sure they don't do anything bad, and then we go back and want to innovate. But that doesn't work, right? As these become so pervasive to humanity, and I think our social systems, a lot of the you know, social web, you know, has shown, you know, unmanaged, these things aren't good. And it's our job to shape them for good every day. Quantum computing, whatever. Uh, quantum computing. So um, how, how many of you know how a transistor works? A few of you do, right? You know, right? You know, for the most part, right? You know, you don't need to know how a transistor works. We just string together millions or billions of them, and we're able to do great things like you have in the phone in your pocket, right? In a quantum computer, the transistor, this little on-off switch that we string them together in magic ways, gets replaced by a qubit. Right. You know, if you would write a quantum effect that actually not is representing one state, but representing many states simultaneously. And because of that, some problems are solvable in quantum space that aren't easily solved in digital space. So quantum computers, you know, will be able to solve problems that aren't easily solvable today by digital techniques. You know, some of those will be things like protein folding and being able to do, you know, proteomics, you know, but the biggie security right and that's the one that all of you should be very thoughtful about is how will quantum computing change security because today people are taking and copying your digital information our nation's digital information and knowing that when we get quantum supremacy you know the day a quantum computer can be big enough and good enough that i'll be able to solve and go back and look at that data Right. And be able to crack the encryption associated with it. You know, that's why, you know, NIST just released uh, what's are called the quantum resistant, you know, encryption algorithms. So to me, you know, we had Y2K, right? For those of you who remember that, you know, we will have Y2Q. Before the end of this decade, we must systemically be upgrading all of our security algorithms to be quantum resistant. Because I believe sometime in the early 2030s, we will, and I have a big quantum program, you know, one that's based on silicon qubits. So if I can make them work, if I can make these little qubits work, I can produce a lot of them because I get to do it in all those big silicon factories that we're running as well. And if I can produce a lot of them, we will create a quantum suprema, supremacy supercomputer that will complement high performance computers. To AI computers, you know, with quantum computers. And I believe that happens sometime in the early 2030s is when we'll be able to that point. And by then, all of us will have needed to have our security upgraded. And as those things emerge, we're going to be able to solve problems we can't do today. You know, some of those in the medical domain, some of those in the finance domain, some of those in schedule domain, you know, quantum computer will be a major new breakthrough, just like the transistor was 75 years ago.